We love how actors can bring certain characters to life. However, there are certain casting choices that leave us scratching our heads. Have you ever had one of these moments? Sometimes we can't believe what they were thinking. Other times we realize their choices actually make the movie better in the long run. Check out this list that we've made for you. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below and stay up to date with our videos by joining the notification squad. What movie do you think these emojis are hinting at? Find out shortly following the video. So, I'm afraid I'm a bit hungover. Wish I could be lying with my head in the toilet like all normal people. Renee Zellweger, Bridget Jones' Diary. An American portraying a British woman? Fans were livid when finding out Renee Zellweger, the Texas-born actress, would be starring in Bridget Jones' Diary. How could an American take on this role? The criticism hurt Zellweger, especially when some took it so far, saying that no one had ever heard of her, or what has she ever done? Luckily, her co-star, Hugh Grant, came to her rescue. He told Entertainment Weekly how funny she was and that she had been living in England a long time, mastering the accent. It'll be a triumph, he said. Zellweger waited two years for the call to come after Winslet passed on the role due to schedule scheduling issues as well as Helena Bonham Carter. The producers expanded their search and considered Kate Blanchett as well as Cameron Diaz before settling with Zellweger. Renee put on as much as 25 pounds and worked with a dialect coach to perfect her accent. Not only did perfecting the accent require daily exercise, but also using it off-screen as well. Zellweger's hard work and determination led to a film franchise and stunned audiences. Despite all of the scrutiny, she never let her accent slip and gave an all-around great performance. I'll discover the truth from Mr. Bingley at the ball this evening. If it is not true, let Mr. Darcy contradict it himself. Kira Knightley, Pride and Prejudice. When Kira Knightley was cast for the role of Elizabeth Bennet in Joe Wright's adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, the project was seen as catastrophic. Most fans would have preferred to see Jennifer L., who played the role of Bennett in the 1995 BBC miniseries. BBC News had asked readers about the movie in 2004, and there was a fair amount wondering how they could remake a classic. They berated Knightley, saying she was too beautiful, thin, and bad at acting. These were passionate fans, and they didn't want to see their beloved show ruined. Knightley ended up stunning audiences and received one of four Oscars the film was nominated for. When she was on the screen, you could hardly keep your eyes off the then 20-year-old. She captivated you, and you were able to see Elizabeth Bennet in a way she hadn't been portrayed before. Once you accepted the fact that Joe Wright made some adjustments to the film, it swept you up and you were engrossed. It was quite a task to turn a five-hour miniseries into a film of 128 minutes. Wright and screenwriter Deborah Magak created something that had great historical detail, romance, and was satisfying all around. Shut up. Michael Keaton, Batman. When fans found out Michael Keaton was going to be playing the Cape Crusader, fans were more than a little upset. Some actually sent physical letters to the studio complaining about their choice. One account claims the studio received more than 50,000 of them. The primary complaints were that Keaton was a comedian, he wasn't physically intimidating enough, and he didn't have the handsome features one perceives Bruce Wayne having. An article that was released in the Toronto Star said that Batman may turn out to be a wimp. Tim Burton, however, had Keaton's back and tried to put an end to the backlash. He stated that he had met with a number of square-jawed actors, but he couldn't see any of them putting on a bat suit. Keaton had heard the outrage and was dumbfounded as to why it was such a big deal. He felt bad that his starring in the role was an issue. Those fanboys can be one tough crowd to please. Keaton put all of the doubts to bed, and his performance made Batman one of the biggest hits that year. He is arguably the reason why so many superhero movies have popped up in the last decade. One, two, go! <laughs> oh. Charlize Theron monster. Some people were left wondering whether or not the gorgeous starlet Charlize Theron could pull off playing the unattractive, mentally ill serial killer Eileen Warnos. She really got into the role by putting on 30 pounds and donning prosthetic teeth which completely transformed the way she looked. Theron shocked audiences everywhere when she completely immersed herself in the character and was basically unrecognizable. It is real, raw, and mesmerizing to see on the big screen. Theron didn't want people to sympathize with Eileen, but rather empathize which is rather hard with a serial killer. Not only was gaining weight and wearing fake teeth a transformation, but also the swagger and posture she used for the role. Theron was a trained ballet dancer, so it was a step in the opposite direction to develop her gait for the character. Theron was also granted access to a lot of Eileen's letters, which led her to delve deeper into the real person to encapsulate her completely. Theron won an Oscar, Golden Globe, and Screen Actors Guild Award for the movie. Roger Ebert was quoted saying it was one of film's greatest acting performances. Will we ever see another stellar performance out of Theron like we did in Monster?
Okay, thank you very much. We'll call you back. Jonah Hill, Moneyball. When you think of Jonah Hill, you probably think of the curly-headed, overweight, foul mouth from Superbad. When he was cast as Peter Brand in Moneyball, you may have been scratching your head wondering how he could land a role like that. Peter Brand is a Yale economics graduate who becomes an assistant general manager for the Oakland Athletics baseball team. Brand is loosely based on ex-assistant general manager Paul De Podesta, quite the opposite from Hill's character Seth in Superbad. This was his first dramatic role and he received widespread critical acclaim. He did so well he was nominated for an Academy Award as Best Supporting Actor. When Hill took on the role of Brand, it was not only a sidestep from comedy but also a lesson in being an actor. He is quoted saying the most challenging scene in his life was when Brad Pitt as Billy Bean asked him to basically fire the first baseman. It's a 45 second scene where you get to see the character grow up, which is rare. It was refreshing to see Jonah in a drama where he could see his true potential as an actor and left a lot of us in shock. My hands are a little dirty. So am I. Albert Brooks, Drive. Albert Brooks is well known for his comedy and distinctive voice as Marlin in Finding Nemo. I'm a clownfish! It was a little surprising to see him portray the villainous small-time mobster Bernie Rose in Drive starring Ryan Gosling. Brooks ended up taking the role because of the character's complexity and it was a character he generally isn't seen as. Rose is a guy you don't want to mess around with. You don't really see how much of a bad guy he really is until the film starts to unfold. He just comes across as being vaguely shady in the beginning. He's not the typical maniac who stirs up trouble on the silver screen and it makes the movie that much darker, more suspenseful as to what he may do next. His performance was met with a lot of critical acclaim and a lot of people felt he was snubbed out of an Oscar when he wasn't nominated for an Academy Award. Despite that, everyone knows what a great performance he gave and stepping out of the typecasting role landed him in a movie people won't soon forget. What did you think of his role in the movie? Were you just as surprised they chose him for the part? <laughs> Daniel Craig, Casino Royale. When the news was released that Daniel Craig would be the new face of the suave, sophisticated super spy 007, people couldn't handle it. His blondness, general appearance, and height were all issues to some. He was given the name James Blonde in a snarky meme. Sam Mendes, a director who had worked with Craig years prior, was skeptical about him being able to play Bond as well. Entertainment Weekly had called him and asked him what he thought when Craig was considered for the role. Mendes replied that it was a terrible idea, he shouldn't do it. He thought that Daniel's reality, passion, and honesty as an actor would not work out. Craig saw the potential of the script and Martin Campbell, the director of GoldenEye, would be doing Casino Royale. The success Campbell had with Brosnan and GoldenEye transferred over to Casino Royale and Craig's performance silenced the naysayers. Mendes Mendes took back what he said prior and stands with the folks who think Craig did a phenomenal job. Craig's darker and meaner presence is more on par with how he is portrayed in Ian Fleming's novels and it is a change of pace to what the other Bond actors have brought to the screen in the past. A lot would agree he is up there with the best. Anne Hathaway, The Dark Knight Rises. Batman fans were skeptical once again when Anne Hathaway was cast as Catwoman slash Selina Kyle in The Dark Knight Rises. Hathaway may have been seen as too cute or bubbly to play a slinky, flirty cat burglar. Her looks came into question as well as everyone's opinions differ on what attractive is. Some people thought she wasn't hot enough, especially if what they picture Catwoman to be is based off the animated series or video games. Hathaway was in competition for the role with actresses that included Kira Knightley, Rachel Weisz, Naomi Watts, Blake Lively, and Natalie Portman. Quite a group of starlets to go up against. Nolan stated he was thrilled to have the opportunity to work with Hathaway and said she would be a fantastic addition to the ensemble. Despite all the criticism prior, Hathaway did a stellar job filling the role of Selena Kyle. Her single line of oops when Bruce Wayne interrupts her stealing from him solidified the rest of her performance. The on-screen chemistry between her and the Cape Crusader was what one might expect. Flirty, sexy, mysterious, and insincere all at the same time. Hathaway was sure to stun a lot of fans thinking she originally couldn't play the role. As of right now, she may be the best Catwoman we've ever seen on the big screen. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence, The Hunger Games. Not skinny enough, beach bunny blonde, chubby cheeks, these were a few complaints people had about Jennifer Lawrence when she was chosen to play Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger Games trilogy. Since she was from the impoverished community of District 12, twig thin is what some argued she should look like. In an interview with Teen Vogue, Lawrence brushed off the backlash and said she understood that every fan has a personal relationship with the character. They only understand her in a singular way. 
Another complaint about Lawrence was that she would be too old for the role. She was 20 at the time attempting to play a 16 to 17 year old girl. Suzanne Collins, the author, saw every single audition and she didn't have an issue with Jennifer's age. She felt there needed to be someone with a certain maturity to play Katniss and Lawrence could provide that. Director Gary Ross saw what fans of the book series didn't see in Lawrence. After seeing Winter's Bone, he thought she was phenomenally talented, riveting, and had so much power. Once she came in and read for him, she knocked him out. She ended up doing a scene for the movie and he could see every aspect of the role and the whole movie's potential. Heath Ledger, The Dark Knight Before Heath Ledger became legendary for his role as the Joker in Christopher Nolan's Batman The Dark Knight, most people saw him as the bad boy from 10 Things I Hate About You and the squire turned knight in A Knight's Tale. Most of the world was surprised when his portrayal of one of the greatest comic book villains ever was stellar. It was hard to see it coming. Most people didn't think it was possible for him to play the role. It's surprising people went to go see the film because no one wanted him to be casted. The internet went ballistic. One person went so far as to say it was the worst casting of all time. They were all thinking back to his days playing the romantic dreamy guy and portraying a sadistic villain was just too much of a stretch. Luckily, Heath proved us all wrong and its role in the film helped pave the way for its immense success in making over $500 million in the US alone. There may or may not ever be someone who can portray the Joker as well as he did. It was something extraordinary and we were all privileged to see such fine acting. Well, what did you think of our list? Are there any movies you can think of that could go on here? Before we get, the answer to the movie emoji is, did you guess it? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching our video and don't forget to check out our playlist.